Hi, Eric here. Are you thinking of apartment hunting here in Phnom Penh? Well, here are six things that you should know before you start. If you're watching this video, then you are either moving to Cambodia or are thinking of moving to Cambodia, or you are already here in Cambodia and you're looking to change apartments. And so this guide is going to help you more successfully find those apartments, uh, whether you are already in Cambodia or outside of Cambodia. So here are the six things that you need to know to really help you in your apartment search. This first piece of advice is really more for people who either have not been to Cambodia or have not been to Cambodia in a long time. So maybe you've never been here but have to move here or maybe you were here for uh, a few days, uh, seven or eight years ago. Um, if that is the case, then this tip is for you and that tip is get an agent. This country has changed dramatically and Phnom Penh especially has changed a lot to the point where some of the neighborhoods are just completely different. So if it's been a while since you've been here or you have never been here, you should really get somebody who knows what they're talking about. And the great thing about the agents is that they're all free. You don't have to pay an agent. Uh, it's actually the apartment owner that has to pay the agent to the tune of one month of rent. So um, just get an agent and give the agent a list of things that you need. If you need a good agent, I do happen to know one and you could uh, reach out and ask me uh, and I will definitely give you the name of a good agent or two. The second thing that you should know before you go apartment hunting in Cambodia is that most of the apartments are furnished whereas most of the houses are not. If you're looking for a house, first of all, if you're in Phnom Penh, that's going to be very expensive. If you're like most people and you're looking for an apartment, they are usually furnished. However, furnished doesn't mean the same thing here as it does in somewhere like Bangkok. So a furnished apartment in Phnom Penh means that all the furniture is included. So you'll have your sofas and your chairs and you'll have your beds and you're going to have uh, a washing machine. But that's about it. Most apartments in Phnom Penh that are furnished understand that they don't have a lot of the things that you need for your day-to-day -day life. So you will not have any bedding. Uh, in many cases, there will not be pillows. In most cases, there will be nothing in the kitchen. So they'll have a nice kitchen, but there won't be pots or pans or plates or silverware or chopsticks or spatulas or all the, the different utensils that you're, you're going to need to cook. Uh, so uh, the bathrooms will have bathrooms. There won't be towels. There won't be uh, things to hold your soap. There won't be usually most of the things that you need. There are a few exceptions to this, but over 90% of the apartments will come furnished with furniture. And so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about an apartment and the cost of an apartment and how beautiful the apartment is. Make sure that you're opening the, the drawers and seeing what's in the kitchen uh, cabinets. And the answer is probably nothing. And so it can actually cost quite a lot of money for you to go out and buy all of those things. Um, unless you have a ton of money, I recommend that if you are going to buy all the odds and ends you're going to need for your apartment that you don't necessarily go to Eon Mall or the expensive places, but try to go to the local shops and the local markets. And if your business is going to reimburse you for some of those costs, then that's good. Uh, most of the local businesses, even at the, the little markets, like in the, the Russian market or the central market or oversight market, will write you a handwritten receipt so that you can get your money back. The third thing that you should know before you go apartment hunting in Cambodia is always bargain. Whatever the asking price is, almost in every single circumstance, they will go down a little bit on the price. In fact, my experience is that the prices are set in such a way that they expect you to bargain down. So if an apartment is $700 a month, you can wiggle down always at least $50 and maybe even $100 in some cases. Um, the apartment that we have right now, which is a, a three bed, four bath, oversized behemoth, um, it's only $800 a month, but the asking price was $1,000 per month. 
Uh, but as a general rule, the lower the price, the less that you can wiggle. But generally, the prices are set up so that you can wiggle 50 to $100 down just a little bit. Uh, I can't tell you how many different apartments that I looked at where the owner said, this apartment is $600, and he just volunteered. But that's just the asking price. And some of them even volunteered right away the lowest price. This apartment is $600, they'll say, but, but we'll go down to $550. So you should expect that the apartment owner is going to move a little bit on the price. So if your absolute maximum budget is 800, you can do searches for apartments that are 850. If your maximum budget is 250, then you can look for an apartment that's 300. It will almost certainly go down uh, to 250. You can also negotiate on the deposits. Uh, some people want two months, but almost every apartment owner will accept one month of deposit. As far as what you're expected to put up uh, right at the beginning, you're going to have to put up the one month deposit and then you're going to also have to go put up uh, an additional month as your first month of rent, meaning that like everywhere else I've ever been in the world, you don't get to live there and then pay. You, you pay the, the rent a month ahead of time. So if you have a $600 per month apartment, then before you move in, you'll need to pay $1,200, which is to say your deposit, which you should get back later if you don't uh, use and abuse your apartment too badly, and then the first month of rent, uh, which I think is pretty normal. One further tip that I can give you within this tip for apartment hunting is that if you are looking at an apartment, you're doing an actual viewing, don't go in scruffy looking. I don't mean that you have to dress up in a tux in order to, to come in and uh, view an apartment, but if you come in looking super scruffy, dirty, unshaven and unkempt, I can just tell you that in this culture, they're going to be less enthusiastic about renting to you because apartments are valuable commodities here in Phnom Penh and everywhere in the world, and they want to rent to people that they feel are going to take care of their apartments. So if you come in looking homeless, they're going to assume that, well, this person doesn't take care of themselves, and so they aren't going to take care of our apartment. And you're certainly going to have less wiggle room when you are trying to bargain with the apartment owner. The fourth piece of advice I'm going to give you is that if you are looking at listings on an agent's page or on a website, they're almost always going to show you the best apartment in the building and they will often show you a montage of different photos from more than one apartment, believe it or not, instead of the one that you're actually going to be brought to see. I would say that over 50% of the apartments I looked at were like this, where they'll show you a picture of a, a, the brightest nicest living room in the entire place and the the bedroom that doesn't have the view blocked by the building and that kind of thing so i'll relay you an experience that i recently had so i was looking at an apartment that was shown by a real estate company on facebook and so i contacted the the realtor that was listed there on Facebook and we went to, to see. And this was a Riverside apartment with uh, very beautiful views of the river. And they showed these bright bedrooms and these, this apartment that's in great condition and all, all these things. So uh, great views everywhere, including in the, the bedroom. So we went and they took us to a completely different apartment uh, that had a similar living room but the, the bedrooms were uh, much smaller and more gross. And uh, in one case, there was even a missing window and it was not what was in the ad. So I showed them a picture from the ad and I said, hey, can you take us to the one in the ad? And they said, oh yeah, yeah, sure. And then they took us down a few floors and they showed us one that had a similar layout to the one that was in the advertisement, but, um, it was on a low floor and so a lot of the the views especially in the bedroom were covered by adjoining buildings and you couldn't really see out and then the the floor in the living room was horribly buckled from a major moisture problem and they said well we're going to fix that and i said this is not the apartment that was in the advertisement there was an undamaged higher level unit that you showed that was in the advertisement that had unobstructed views in all the bedrooms and all the bedrooms were bright and the apartment was in good condition. We want to see that apartment. 
And their response was, oh, sorry, uh, that one's not available right now. And so you know, we just wasted the, the, the whole afternoon uh, on this particular viewing. So if you are going to be looking at an apartment and that particular one strikes your fancy, then ask the agent, are we going to look at that exact apartment or are we going to look at another unit uh, within that same building? Another problem that we had uh, was on an apartment that we toured recently, which you can see right here in this video. Our agent told us that this apartment that we liked a lot was being listed at $650 per month. So we went to see the apartment, we liked it, and we put in an offer of $550 per month, knowing that the owner probably wouldn't accept $100 less on an apartment of that price. So uh, the agent talked to the owner and the agent came back and said, yeah, he said he wouldn't accept um, $550 a month. And I said, did he make a counter offer? And the agent said, no, he won't budge. And I said, well, counter offer him $600 uh, because that's a, a pretty reasonable uh, uh, amount of money to go down. It was like 8%. And so the agent came back again and said, no, he will not budge down one penny. And so we lost the apartment because I didn't want to be uh, living uh, under the rule of a landlord who was completely non-negotiable. I mean, if he's that unreasonable and he doesn't even have our money yet, imagine after he gets our money. Uh, I found out later that in fact, the apartment had been listed at $700 per month and the agent just lied and told us it was 650 to get us within our price range and to, to take us to that apartment. Um, and in fact, uh, really, the difference of $50, that, that didn't scare me off. It was the fact that the guy wasn't negotiable. In fact, he was negotiable, and the, the realtor just lied to us. Uh, I even said, hey, why don't I go down and talk to the, uh, the guy who uh, was working in the building when we looked? And his response was, oh, no, he doesn't make any decisions. He's just a worker. Later, I found out that, in fact, he was the, the, the manager of the apartment, and he does all the deals. So. Uh, just be careful of the agent and uh, just make sure that you have an agent that you feel like you can trust. Uh, again, uh, I can recommend an agent that you can trust and in fact I'll put him down uh, in, the, uh, in the description right now. So you can go look and uh, he's a good guy and you can trust him. The fifth thing to know before you go looking for an apartment in Cambodia and especially Phnom Penh is that the further away you get from the city center, the cheaper the apartments are. But just because you are further away in a cheaper apartment does not mean it's actually cheaper to live there. So sure, if you move 30 minutes outside from the city center, you can save a little bit of money on your apartment, but just be aware that especially if you are afraid to be on a motorcycle, if you're gonna take a tuk-tuk everywhere, you're gonna spend a fortune on tuk-tuks. And you're gonna spend a fortune as far as your own time getting everywhere that you wanna go. So if you live in the south of town and you're pretty far from the city center and you are uh, trying to get to macro, which is where you can buy lots of uh, bulk food for cheap, well, it's gonna cost you a fortune for that 45 minute drive to macro. It is my suggestion that you look for a place that is relatively close to the city that is actually um, not too expensive. So BKK1, very expensive. Riverside, pretty expensive. But if you are in Russian Market, if you're in Tul Cork, if you're a little further uh, outside from Riverside and down Penn, these areas can be reasonably affordable. But if you uh, just want to go as cheap as you possibly can, well, you can go way out there. There are some really nice, beautiful mid-rises and high-rises that are quite cheap if you're pretty far out. If you have a motorcycle, it might be worth it. If you have a tuk-tuk, you're gonna end up spending all the money that uh, you would have saved in your rent. So uh, that is just my fifth piece of advice. The sixth and final piece of advice for if you're looking for apartments in Cambodia is that you can just look yourself. You don't need an agent. The strategy that Saimai and I took when we targeted Russian market and we just wanted to live there in Russian market for sure, was one weekend we just walked every single street in Russian market. If you're looking at a, a mid rise or a high rise, you can just walk into them. There's usually a security guard or an agent right there and just say, hello, do you have any apartments available? And they'll show you all the apartments they have available and give you the price. Uh, you don't need an appointment. 
Usually the apartments are empty. Or uh, if you want something that's uh, cheaper, maybe above a shop house or something like that, you can just walk around. And if you see a sign with some Kamai words and then a phone number underneath it, it always means for rent. Just call the number and if somebody picks up and they speak English, which uh, often they do, just say, hi, can I see your apartment? Or just walk up to the gate and politely tap on the gate with a big smile on your face and they may just, just let you in. And so Saimai and I canvassed every single mid-rise and high-rise in Russian market until we found one that we liked. And, uh, and that was it. And uh, that's what you can do. Furthermore, you can get a slightly better price because when you go in without an agent, the apartment manager knows that they don't have to pay an agent their one month fee if it's you not with an agent. So you might be able to negotiate a slightly lower price in some, but not all cases, but in some cases. So if you have time, if you have uh, a few days uh, because you're either switching apartments and maybe you've got months ahead of time or you've flown in and you've got a week before your job starts or you don't even have a job and you're, you're just needing a little bit of time, just look yourself. Take some time and look yourself. Uh, you might find that you really like certain neighborhoods uh, or really don't like certain neighborhoods. And that's important to know before you sign a six month or a one year lease, right? So yeah, those are my six different suggestions or piece of advice for if you're looking for an apartment in Cambodia and especially in Phnom Penh. So if you have any other questions, please just put them uh, right down there in the comments and I'm definitely going to answer them. And thank you for watching. Have a great day and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.